Okay, so the next thing I want to talk about is we've discussed the Jordan canonical form. So now that gives us a nice opportunity to discuss maybe other canonical forms and factorizations. So So specifically, we will look at triangular factorizations where um, you, you will reduce a matrix to a triangular form. And this is useful because if you are trying to uh, solve a system of linear equations, then uh, if A is, so suppose we have, so the, the motivation is that we want to solve AX equals B, and suppose A is non-singular and square, and let's say it's upper triangular. Then what I can do is, uh, it's basically this system of equations is of the form A11 to A1n, ANN, zero times X1 through Xn equals B1 to Bn. Okay, and um, one way to solve this is through what is known as back substitution. We will use the last equation, a n n x n equals b n, and this will directly give us uh, x n. And then we substitute that into a n minus 1 n minus 1 n minus 1 times x n minus 1 plus a n minus 1 n times x n equals bn minus 1 and you can solve you already know what xn is so you can substitute for xn in here take it to the other side and you can solve for xn minus 1 and so on so um, basically uh, if a is triangular we can do this but if a is not triangular but it is non-singular but you can almost do what what is what i just showed you uh, if we have a factorization that looks like A equal to LU, where L is lower triangular and U is upper triangular. Okay, so then what we can do is in, to solve for uh, solve for uh, or to solve AX equals B, what we can do is we first solve L, let's call it Y. A is LU, so UX I'll call it Y equals B. And L is lower triangular, so you can use exactly the opposite of what I discussed here, and that is typically also called forward substitution. And then once you found Y, you, you solve UX equals Y. This is backward as I did because U is, is upper triangular. So if I can find the factorization of A in the form of U, then I can solve uh, AX equals B using these two forward and backward substitution steps. So this is, this is meaningful only if I can compute L and U without too much computational effort. Otherwise, um, I might as well try to invert A. Okay, so how do you do this uh, LU factorization? So the answer to that question lies in what is known as Gaussian elimination. Okay, so we'll come to LU factorization in a bit, but first this is a small detour. Uh, which is um, a Gaussian elimination is one way to solve a system of linear equations. I suspect most of you have seen this in your undergraduate already, but just to recap. Um, so suppose just as an example, we are given AX equals B. A is some matrix of size 3 cross 3 and it's non-singular then basically the system of equations I'm trying to solve will look like A11, A12, 
a13 a21 a22 a23 a31 a32 a33 times x1 x2 x3 is equal to b1 b2 b3 then what i can do is uh, i can use gaussian elimination to reduce this to the form a11 a12 a13 zero a22 dash a23 dash and uh, 0 0 8 3 3 say double dash times x1 x2 x3 is equal to i have to do the same gaussian elimination operations on the right side so i'll have b1 b2 dash and b3 double dash okay and then now i can this is of the form u times x equals b and backward substitution works Okay, so what are these uh, row operations I do to get this form? It's very simple. What I have to do is uh, first I compute row 2 with the dash, the single dash, is equal to row 2 minus A21 over A11 times row 1. Do that, this, this element will become 0 and these two will give you something else and this B1 dash b2 will become some b2 dash and then I do row 3 dash is equal to row 3 minus a31 over a11 times row 1. So this will kill the bottom right entry of uh, the matrix and then you'll have a b3 dash on the right hand side but these entries may be non-zero and then we compute row 3 double dash equal to row 3 dash minus uh, a uh, 3 2 dash divided by a 2 2 dash times row 2 dash. So if you do these three steps, it will reduce the matrix down to this form and then you'll have the b2 dash, b3 dash and then you can use backward substitution to solve for x. So basically, each row operation, it, uh, what they do, these row operations, they preserve the uh, preserve the uh, original system of equations, and uh, each each operation places uh, zero um, in an appropriate place. below the main diagram. And this is the reason why this uh, Gaussian elimination works. Okay, so um, basically once uh, A is triangularized, um, we can uh, obtain the solution by backward substitution. So, um, so here is the backward substitution algorithm. Just for the sake of completeness, I've already explained what it is. So, for i equal to n, n minus 1, down to 1, what you do is uh, you set xi equals bi and then for j equal to i plus 1 to n um, we set xi uh, xi minus uij times xj And then finally, you set xi equals xi over uii. So, if you if you actually went through the uh, computational uh, effort involved in doing Gaussian elimination, 
and uh, backward substitution. Uh, one counts the number of uh, computational operations in terms of flops or floating point operations. And so uh, the total number of floating point operations uh, for Gaussian elimination is uh, of the order of 2n cube over 3 and the total number of flops backward substitution is of the order of uh, n square. So basically Gaussian elimination is the most expensive step in solving um, for Ax equals b via Gaussian elimination. Okay, so, um, so with that background, we can now discuss about uh, LU decomposition. So um, we want to find um, L, which is a lower triangular matrix, and U, which is an upper triangular matrix. such that A is equal to LU. Okay, so the question said, how do you perform this LU decomposition? And what is its computational effort? And finally, what is the relationship between Gaussian elimination and LU decomposition? So uh, the first point about finding this, or first step in finding this LU decomposition is uh, something forms. So um, basically, the Gaussian elimination is uh, equivalent to, uh, to a sequence of Gauss transforms. What this we will see, and we'll explicitly write out how this happens. That is, there exists matrices um, M1, M2, up to N minus 1, which are in um, R to the N cross N, such that m n minus 1, m n minus 2, all the way down to m1 times a is equal to u. And this is in the upper triangular form. Okay, and mk specifically is a matrix that introduces uh, a zero or zeros below the main diagonal on the kth column after the previous k minus 1 transforms. Okay, so basically after n minus 1 transforms, uh, the result is upper triangular and the Gaussian elimination is complete. So the first transform m1 will introduce zeros below the first column of A. The second M2, M2, M1, A will have zeros below the main diagonal of the first two columns of A and so on. So after K, N minus one transforms, um, the result is upper triangular and Gaussian elimination is complete. Okay, so the uh, the thing that we need to understand next is what is the structure of MK? So this is something I will discuss in the next class. We'll stop here for today.